Stay tuned, egg yolks for dessert. for dessert. I mean, a couple other ingredients, but we're going to make a classic Italian zabaglione. There's many different ways of pronouncing it. I like the Italian version. It sounds very romantic. Zabaglione. I'm going to make you some zabaglione for dessert. And what it is, is typically egg yolks, traditionally with marsala wine and sugar. And you just slowly cook the eggs and it gets nice and thick and frothy. It's like a custard, but the difference between a custard and a zabaglione is a custard is always made with eggs and milk or cream. And a zabaglione is no milk or cream. So it's like that, but it's a lot lighter, a lot frothier, and it's a perfect dessert for summertime because you can add some fresh berries on top. Whatever local fresh berries are in season, it's fantastic and you're gonna fall in love with my version because I am not doing Marsala wine. BC Egg and I are going to bring you a lemon zabaglione by using lemoncello instead of Marsala wine. So Marsala wine is like a sweet wine. I really like the flavor of this and I love lemon custard. So let me show you how easy this is. But I always want you to remember in every single large BC egg, you have 14 key nutrients, all nine essential amino acids, six grams of the highest quality protein you can get. And one large egg is only 80 calories. But again, we're just stealing the yolks from them, okay? This is my favorite way of separating egg whites from egg yolks. But I want you to watch my video at bcegg.com to see the three ways I show you how to separate egg yolks. I just let the egg whites fall through my fingers, I rescue the yolk, and I put it in my mixing bowl. So we're gonna take four BC egg yolks and put them in a medium size mixing bowl, stainless steel, and I'll tell you why in a minute. I'll save those whites for some meringue or I'll add it to my omelet tomorrow to make it a little bit more healthier, extra protein. Well, that one popped on me, but that's okay, I rescued it, it's all good. And here's number four. Let me just put these egg whites to the side. So what we're gonna do, we have to do some whisking, some very vigorous whisking. If you don't like to do that, you can use a stand mixer on high speed if you want to. I'm gonna show you how to do it by hand though. So we're gonna add to our four egg yolks, one quarter cup of white granulated sugar and a pinch of salt, just a small pinch, okay? And then we're gonna whisk this. And what you want this to become, if you look at it now, how dark it is, we want this to become pale yellow and very thick and frothy. And it requires very vigorous whisking, okay? If you get tired, then you just adjust your arm as to how you're doing. So I'll start off this way and really whisk it as hard as you can. And if it gets tiring, then you would change your grip and you can work different muscles in your arm so you can continue whisking. But you wanna do this literally for like two or three minutes total until it becomes very pale yellow and very thick. The other great tip, see what I'm doing here with the bowl? By me moving the bowl as I'm whisking, I get more whisking action as well, instead of just holding the bowl steady and making this one arm do all the work. So I do both like that, and you get more whisking from that, from the same effort. And I'm just gonna keep doing this until it's thick and frothy. All right, so see how thick it is now? See how thick and pale yellow? That's what we're looking for. And see the ribbons on the top? Perfect. So our next step, what we're gonna to add to that, typically, again, you would add Marsala wine. We're gonna add the lemoncello liqueur. And just to give that little brightness that it needs, a tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice. But that's added a lot of liquid now to our mixture. You can see that. So again, you gotta whisk vigorously just to get that into a homogenized mixture. Now it's gonna lose its thickness. You can see that, how it compares to where it was before when it was really thick and frothy. But that's okay, it's supposed to. You just added all that liquid. So just bring it together. Now we're gonna head over to the stove top. So we need to do this over simmering water. Bring your water to a boil first, then reduce it down to a simmer. That way you know the water's gonna be nice and hot. By doing it over a simmer, we wanna make sure that our stainless steel bowl doesn't touch the water. This is called a bain marie and how you cook things very, very slowly or warm things very, very slowly, like if you're melting chocolate, for example. 
There's some videos online that will tell you that the bowl has to touch the water. That's completely incorrect. It's supposed to be an indirect heat source. So just the steam from the water below. So all I have in there is about an inch or two of water and I've brought it to a boil and I just have it now at the simmering point where there's just the odd little bubble coming in there. And then over that simmering water, we're going to cook this mixture. So we wanna cook the egg yolks and we wanna make this nice and thick and frothy. Right now, it's not the consistency of a dessert that I would wanna eat. So we gotta get it there and how we're gonna do that is slowly cook the egg yolks. If the heat was too high or if it was a direct heat source, you run a big risk of you scrambling those eggs in there. You're gonna have these little scrambled egg bits all the way throughout. You don't wanna do that. So nice and slow, indirect heat, simmering water, and you keep whisking until that mixture becomes very thick. Again, it's gonna be thicker than it even was before and it's gonna hold a really nice ribbon in there. The temperature of the mixture at that point should be 145 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So I always recommend having an instant read thermometer standing by so you can double check to make sure we've hit those temperature marks. Keep checking to make sure your water is simmering and adjust the heat as necessary and keep whisking. This is a little bit labor intensive, I get that. But in the end, when you have that beautiful decadent dessert, it makes it all worthwhile, it really does. So I'm just gonna keep doing this, again, until I have that consistency that I want and the temperature of 145 to 150 Fahrenheit. Constantly keep checking your water below to make sure it hasn't gone up to boiling again. You want it just simmering. You can see already, if you look up close, that you can see the trails of the whisk in there. We're not holding a ribbon yet, look. Okay, but you can see it's getting thicker. That's not only because we're cooking the egg yolks, but also because we're whipping air into this mixture as well. But you'll see when it's done, trust me. And again, you can adjust your grip if you want to, if your arm's getting tired. And then just periodically take your thermometer and double check the temperature. So I'm about 110 degrees right now, still climbing a little bit. So I'm gonna continue. In the recipe, I didn't tell you how long this step takes because I always tell people cooking is never time. Cooking is a visual, a texture change, or an internal temperature, or a combination of those three. It's never time. Time is just an approximation, so you know how long it's gonna take you to pull a recipe together. I want you to finish doing this part once the texture you see is what you want and the temperature is what you want. Then I want you to stop, not before then. Have a look at it now. See how much thicker it's getting? And if I was to lift it up, it's just starting to hold a ribbon, but we're not quite thick enough. So I know the temperature is not there yet. Let me check. And sometimes when I get a little closer, I try and keep the mixture moving as I'm taking the temperature. Yeah, I'm about 135 right now, so we're getting close. And I'll know by looking at it that we're there. And if you want to double check to make sure with your thermometer, you can do that. But I'll show you the texture that we're looking for. We're almost there. And see how you're whisking it now? How uh, you can see the bottom of the bowl a little bit? It's telling you that it's becoming very thick. That is holding more up on the whisk and more on the sides of the bowl and then not rolling down like liquid into the center as much. And we are there, we're done, look at that. And now if you lift it up, look at how thick it is, how frothy it is, it's beautiful. Let's plate this now and have a taste. I like to make it look really fancy, so I like using a martini glass. With this dessert, you're gonna to wanna to serve it warm immediately or let it cool to room temperature. If you prefer it chilled, you have a risk of it separating and you may have to re-whisk it again to combine it. Sometimes people will add whipped cream to it to act as a stabilizer so it doesn't separate. That's up to you. But traditionally, a zabioni is served warm or room temperature. So we're gonna take that now and put it in your dessert cups. This makes four small portions in a single recipe. And then optional, take some nice seasonal berries, whatever you have, and spoon that on top. But there you have it, lemon zabioni. Let me take a taste of that. Wow, that is so good. The bright flavor of the lemon comes out. It is amazing. You are absolutely gonna love this dessert. Thanks for watching and make sure you check out bcegg.com for this recipe and a whole bunch of other great recipes, tips and tricks. And this is Chef Dez signing out.
Where are you getting your protein from?